You must be one of the Treehouse Detectives. Hi, I'm Kaylee. I'm Sam James, an engineering technician. Hi, Mr. James. I really like this place. There's so many models. It's a pretty cool place to work. All the models you see here are designed by NASA researchers. I was hoping you could help me understand more about why models are important and how they're made. Um, okay, well, this blended wing body. Where do you think we have to start to make this model? A mold? Good guess. Come over to my desk. That's where we'll begin. Okay. We use a computer-aided design program, CAD for short, to make all of our models, like this blended wing body. Engineers and designers use their design specifications to create a profile. Then the programmers create drawings for the operators to use. What's that over there? They are molds, which are used to make models. Can you show us how to make a mold? Sure, we use several different technologies depending on the type of model we're making. Again, this blended wing model. One way to make this model airplane is to put fiberglass or graphite skins in the mold, then insert what we call power points and bulkheads for support. That's really neat. What kind of materials do you use? We usually use aluminum, balsa wood, and honeycomb to reduce the weight. Wow, these are really light. Are all the models the same size? Not at all. Different tests require different types of models. For instance, the blended wing body. It's going to be made in two different scales. A 1% like the one I showed you earlier, and a 14% like that one on the table over there. By the way, if this 1% model has a wingspan of two and a half feet, what will be the wingspan of the real airplane? He doesn't know that I'm a math whiz, too. That's easy. 1% equals 1 one hundred. So you just multiply 2.5 by 100, and you get 250. You would do great at making a model. 